Oh, hi. So you clicked on this video because you want to learn something related to dentistry. Well, you are on the right place. I am Dr. Hina, the voice and soul behind Dr. Teeth. And this is the platform where we make learning interesting and incredibly easy for you. So do leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I will recommend you to join channel membership to watch our premium videos. You can also visit our website for online classes, courses, and CQs. So let's get started. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. I hope that you all are safe in this pandemic. Now I was making notes of oral surgery and to be specific, the topic was management of fractures. And I realized that first we should start with the basics before diving into all those stuff like reduction, fixation, immobilization. So in this video, we will be seeing the fracture healing, how fracture heals, the two mechanism, the primary mechanism and the secondary mechanism. So bone healing can be by primary intention or secondary intention. Now let us begin with the secondary healing first because this is basically the natural way of healing. We don't approximate the fractured fragments very close so that there is direct formation of bone. We don't do that. Let us suppose we have a patient having a limb fracture. So what does a doctor usually do? He approximates the two pieces together without surgery, okay? He just approximates the, or you can say, he reduces the two fragments together and he then gives a plaster, right? So what is happening inside? We have little micro gaps. We have little movement in the fragment. So that will heal by secondary intention. And how does secondary healing looks like? Let us see. Let us suppose this was the limb and unfortunately it got fractured. Now here there will be rupture of the blood vessels and there will be hematoma formation. Then in few hours inflammatory cells like macrophages, they will come to the area. Then inflammatory mediators like cytokines, platelet derived growth factors, transforming growth factor beta, all those things, they come to that site. Then after week one, mesenchyme stem cells, they will start to grow. Basically, these stem cells, they have the capacity or potential to differentiate into various other types of cells that can perform different functions like chondroblast, fibroblast, osteoblast. So these stem cells, they will start to grow at that site and they will differentiate into chondroblast, fibroblast, osteoblast, okay? Now osteoclast is also present there that will clear the dead bone. So by this time, we have a granulation tissue, okay? And that granulation tissue, it will be replaced by fibrous connective tissue and cartilage. Now when this granulation tissue has got a cartilaginous form, this will act as a splint. You know splint? It is kind of a support. So that is called as the soft callus. Now till now 2-3 weeks have already passed from the fracture. Okay. By this time now the fracture ends have become sticky. Now in the soft callus the bone will start forming because calcium is laid down inside. Till now this bone is the immature bone or the woven bone. As the time proceeds with osteoblastic activity and osteoclastic activity it will change to lamellar bone. Then the remodeling process will continue for months. So that is how the secondary healing happens. So we learned that there is formation of hematoma because of rupture of the blood vessels and that hematoma changes to callus. Now this callus, it will evolve from granulation tissue to connective tissue and then it will get mineralized and eventually lamellar bone will form. So secondary healing happens where usually we don't have a surgical intervention or in case if we have a semi-rigid fixation. In semi-rigid fixation, that means the fragments will still be little mobile. So in those cases, secondary healing happens. Now coming to the primary intention. Now this healing happens when there is minimal or no mobility in the fracture fragments. Now, what type of fractures heal by primary intention? When there is excellent contact between the fractured fragments, like when we do surgery and we reduce the fractured fragments, bring them 
very close to each other in approximation and they stay there without micro movements in those cases we have primary healing also there should be good vascular supply in that area so in rigid fixation we have primary healing rigid fixation means we are using compression plates reconstruction plate so these plates they don't allow any movement between the fracture fragments so healing occurs by primary intention now in primary intention we don't have any callus formation and we can have either gap healing or contact healing now what happens is even though we have given rigid fixation there could be muscle pull or you know under function there could be small gaps created after few days of fracture so in those cases we will have a healing that is called as a gap healing okay now what kind of bone and how will it be formed it will depend on the amount of gap if the gap is less than 0.3 mm lamellar bone will form directly but if the gap is between 0.3 to 1 mm means little more gap first woven bone will form that is the immature bone will form first and then it will be matured and then it will convert to the lamellar bone so that is about the gap healing now contact healing happens in those areas where the gap is almost zero okay so here what happens the vessels in the cells they cannot grow we don't have any gap for them right so we have a special process of bone formation and that is called as the cutting cone mechanism so in cutting cone mechanism osteoclast will first reach the fracture site and they will start to cut away the bones and they will create little pathways where the blood vessels can grow and also the osteoblast proliferation can happen so that they can make new bone so osteoclast they begin to cut away little portion of bone and they will create a pathway for the osteoblast so that they can form a new bone so this was about the primary healing and the secondary healing i hope you understood this concept and you found this video helpful so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already your comments always motivate me to create more videos of this kind so let me know your feedback and also share my videos with your colleagues so that it can reach more students the more the reach the more this platform will grow and it will help us continue what we are doing so i will see you in the next video take care alhafiz <music>